If you're anything like me, every time you open up Twitter, you see this little annoying part of the loading screen. These little blue spinners all appear out of sync. And even worse, if you focus in on just one, you'll actually see it stutter before it finishes. Now, I actually ran into this on an app I'm working on, so today we're gonna fix this using this little demo that I made. So right here we're rendering a spinner and uh, we can add multiple spinners and remove them as well. And we'll see kind of the same idea here where each spinner just starts off at the beginning of its animation when it's mounted, so they appear out of sync. Now the code is pretty simple. We're just using some React state to iterate over an array and render a certain number of spinners. And right down here, we actually have our spinner component, which just returns some SVG. So let's come back up and we'll collapse the app. Let's go down to two spinners and let's talk about exactly how we can fix this. Now, we're actually gonna be using uh, some DOM APIs here. And the first one is document.getAnimations. So as you can see, this gives us an array with all the currently running CSS animations on screen. And we can see that these have an animation name of spin, which is exactly the animation that the CSS class applies to our spinner. Now animations also have this current time property, which is exactly what we're gonna be able to use to set uh, all of these spinners to the same time. So uh, if we just grab these in an animations property, then we can grab the second animation here at index one and set its current time property to animations zero dot current time. And when I hit enter, check it out, both spinners are lined up. So uh, this is gonna be our general approach. And it's nice because we don't really have to do a lot of work in React. The DOM is already tracking all this information for us. So let's come and see if we can write a quick function called window.sync that does this for us. We'll go ahead and grab document.getAnimations. And we only want the spin animations to synchronize this spinner. So uh, again, we have this animation name property. We can go ahead and filter this collection where the animations uh, animation name is equal to spin. So this should get us all of our animations. And uh, basically here, we just want to synchronize any of these to the first one. So let's destructure this array to the first one as well as the rest. And then for each one of these other animations, we should be able to say animation.currentTime is equal to the first animation's current time. So now we've got all these spinners kind of out of sync, but if we were to type in sync and hit enter, look at that, everything is synced up. So this is our general strategy, but uh, ideally we wouldn't have to run this function. You know, we really want to run this logic every time a spinner is mounted to the screen. Well, that sounds like a perfect use case for use effect. So let's come to our spinner and add a use effect. And we'll run this on mount. And now we need to figure out somehow whether this spinner is the first spinner on the screen or one of the other ones. So first let's grab this code and we'll throw this into an animations array. And now we need some way to identify uh, this instance of the spinner within this array. Well, if we come back and look at get animations, we'll see that each one of these has an effect property which has a target. And the target actually points to the path that has the CSS animation. So uh, if this target property is the same as this path element, which is the element that has the spin CSS animation being applied to it, then we know uh, which animation in this set corresponds to the current instance of this spinner. So uh, to compare this, we need a ref on this path. So let's go ahead and call use ref. And we'll go ahead and slap this right here on this path. And now we should be able to say, let my animation is equal to animations.find. And we're looking for the animation whose animation.effect.target is equal to our ref's current property. So let's go ahead and log my animation. 
clear our console. And uh, if I click add, we get our fifth spinner here. Let's take a look at what we logged. And in fact, uh, this is pointing to this fifth spinner. So now we have a, a hold of the animation that corresponds to this spinner. And we can run our logic. Now, if my animation is equal to uh, the animations array's first element, well, we know that that would be the first spinner, but we just want to sync any other one to that first one. So if it's not equal to that first one, then we can go ahead and run our logic from up here. So uh, we can just come here and say myAnimation.CurrentTime, and we should be able to set that equal to the first animation's current time property. Okay, let's give this a shot. Let's add a spinner, add another one, and uh, that's pretty cool. So uh, just with a little bit of logic right here, we already have synchronized these spinners on mount, and uh, that's pretty neat. That solves one of the problems we saw in the Twitter interface at the beginning. So a uh, pretty good win here for not a lot of code. Now, if you have some experience with React, your spidey senses might be going off right now because effects run after a component has been committed to the screen, actually painted by the browser. Uh, so if you pay attention really closely here, and as I start adding these, you might see a little flicker uh, where the spinner, the new spinner is being added, actually starts off at that starting position, and then the effect runs and it updates and it's synchronized. So uh, right now, this spinner actually is rendering two different frames. We don't want that. But fortunately, there's a perfect solution for this. And that is use layout effect. So this is also a hook from React. The docs say the signature is identical to use effect, but it fires synchronously after all DOM mutations. Use this to read layout from the DOM and synchronously re-render. Updates scheduled inside use layout effect will be flushed synchronously before the browser has had a chance to paint. So uh, this is actually a perfect use case for use layout effect. I don't personally reach for use layout effect that often, and the docs even say you should prefer the standard use effect when possible, but this is an absolutely perfect use case for it. So uh, let's come back, update our effect with use layout effect, which is just an import from React. Hit save and uh, check it out. Every time I add a spinner here, you will never see that flicker because React is making sure to update that before the browser actually paints. So uh, that's a cool little win, cool little use case here for use layout effect. Now there's one more path here that we haven't covered and it actually relates to the second bug we saw in Twitter. And uh, that involves re-rendering the same spinner. So uh, let's come up to our actual app and get rid of use effect. And we can actually get rid of this window.sync function. And I'm gonna add a third button here to our UI that says re-render. And what we wanna do is click this button and re-render the current spinner. So uh, the way we're gonna do that is by changing this key property. Usually in React, we use keys to iterate over objects in an array, but if you change a key, React will actually unmount and remount that same component, even if it's a location in the DOM hasn't changed. So let's come here and create a new key and set key state. We'll start off as zero. We'll make our new button, just call set key equals to key plus one. So it just increments it. And then we'll make our actual key prop here, just a composite key based on the index and on uh, the current value of key. So now when I click re-render, look what happens. The spinner flips back every time because it's being re-rendered. And so this is effectively being unmounted and remounted all over again. And because there's no other spinner on the screen, uh, this first spinner has no current time to sync to. It's just starting from scratch. And so we need some memory that lives outside the instance of a spinner component that the first spinner can read from. Sort of a place to stash a current time property so that when it gets re-rendered, it can just read from that stash time and pick up right where it left off. So uh, for that, let's just come out here in module scope and create a new stash time property. And now what we wanna do is once the last spinner on the screen unmounts, we want to stash its current time. 
Well, uh, we have a layout effect right here, which has a cleanup function we can return, and this is gonna run when it's unmounted. So we can say uh, if we actually are the first animation, so if we're equal to that first element in the array, let's go ahead and set stashed time equal to my animation's current time. So now we have this property set, and we can say uh, if we are the first animation when we mount and we have a stash time, let's go ahead and set our current time equal to that stash time. And now when we click re-render, look at that. It's seamless. We can't even tell it's being unmounted and remounted. That's exactly what we want. And uh, even if we add a bunch of these and re-render them, they're all being re-rendered because of this composite key is changing for each one. Uh, nothing is being interrupted, everything looks super smooth. So uh, this is a pretty cool solution. I was pretty happy with this and uh, it fixes kind of both of those bugs we saw on Twitter. Let's uh, bring this into my app and see if it fixes the bug that I was seeing there. So first, uh, to make this a little bit easier to copy, let's move this logic into a new use synchronized animation hook. I'm just gonna grab all this stuff, move it up here. And instead of hard coding spin right here, let's pass this in as an animation name parameter. Put it right here. And let's go ahead and add animation name to the dependency array. And we'll return the ref so that our component can use it. So now we should be able to say let ref equals use synchronized animation for spin. And our demo should be right back to where it started. Everything looks good. So uh, let me copy this and let's just come over to my little side project here. I've got my spinner component open up right here. Let's go ahead and add a use synchronized animation hook to our hooks directory. I'll go ahead and export this. Let's grab use ref and use layout effect and uh, come back to our spinner. Now the flow I was seeing the bug in is if I'm logged in and I try to visit sign up. So check this out. If you saw right there that spinner uh, stuttered a little bit just like we were seeing with Twitter and that's because there's some redirect and data loading logic going on. Let's go ahead and use synchronized animation for spin. Grab the ref and uh, it's this ref right here that has our spin animation, we'll drop it just like that. And let's give this a shot. All right, moment of truth. Look at that. I think that is so cool. So what's happening here is I'm fetching some data on this page and then I'm calling next.js's router.push method in an effect because I've discovered that the user is authenticated, they shouldn't be on the signup page. And then we're rendering the home page which is also doing its own data fetching. And the signup page is using suspense to fetch data and the home page is, but the router.push isn't. So there's basically three different uh, JSX trees being rendered to the screen here, but uh, each one results in the same DOM, in the same JSX, which is just a single spinner. Uh, but that spinner is being unmounted and mounted again, but it doesn't matter from the perspective of our new slick spinner component. Um, whether those are being unmounted because everything is just seamless here. So I thought that was a really cool way to just be able to give yourself an easy spinner you can drop in anywhere. Again, like Twitter, sometimes you have it in multiple parts of the screen, you're loading what's new and the latest tweets and your messages. It's just nice when they all line up. And the fact that once you use this hook and you have this kind of spinner component here uh, ready to go, no one on your team has to think about it. You can just render a spinner anywhere you need to and uh, everything's gonna be nice and shiny. So with that, I think our work here is done.